This is video one of unit one, measurements and calculations. In this portion of the video, we will talk about making proper measurements. Now, in the laboratory, we have a lot of different equipment. For example, here is a ruler. Here is the graduated cylinder used to measure liquids. And then this is a balance. It's actually a triple beam balance. You place an object on here, and then you adjust these riders until we balance out again. Uh, it measures in grams, by the way. Now, all of these instruments have to be used properly. And the way we use them properly is we have to take full advantage of the instrument, recording all the digits that the instrument gives you. And we will show you how to do that here. So here is an example of a ruler and a bunch of markings. Here is the piece of uh, item that we want to measure. And the question is, how many digits can this ruler give you? Hopefully you've used rulers before. So this ruler is a metric ruler, which means it uses the base 10 for measurements. Every section is divided into 10 smaller sections. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Now, when we measure, we realize that this object here is at least three centimeters long. So to make this measurement, we'll put a three down. We know it's at least three, but it's somewhere between three and four. So what we do is between these two marks, between the three and the four, we make 10 divisions. And you usually do this kind of in your head. So I'm going to do it for us here. So there'll be 10 divisions. They won't be perfect, but here they are. So we have roughly 10 divisions there. And then we estimate in our head where does the object fall. And it roughly falls on the third division. You would say this is about 3 past the 3. So then you make your measurement as 3 at the point 3. So this right here is your estimated digit. So this is the estimated digit. Now someone may have said, well, it looks to me like it's a 2 which is fine, that person would have recorded 3.2, and their estimated digit would be a 2, which is also fine. The estimated digit can actually vary between different people, but everyone has to record an estimated digit. The first digit, then, is called a direct or a certain digit. Everyone should agree on the 3. The 3 should all be the same for everyone, but the estimated digit, people can disagree about. So this instrument, this ruler, actually gives you one decimal place. If you were to record just the three, the recording would actually be invalid. If you record 3.34, this will also be invalid. So in both these cases, these would be invalid measurements. The only valid one is the one that has two numbers, one decimal place. Now with every single recording that you make, you also have to put a unit. So in this case, our unit would be centimeters and every unit uh, is dependent on which instrument you use in this case this instrument measures in centimeters so make sure you put the centimeters at the end of it so the final answer should look something like this okay let's try a second ruler with the uh, same object and the question is the same how many digits can this ruler give you same as before this is a one a one this is a two a three, a four, so we're still between three and four, but now we can actually measure and uh, be a little more precise. So now this is, this right here is a point one, this is a point two, this is a point three, so we'll see point three, this is point two, and this is point one. So we can actually be a little more precise. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that our object actually goes to the point two, and maybe just a little bit beyond it. So in this case, the first two digits are certain, which is a three and a point two. These two are now certain. So we can say three point two for the certain measurements. And then the last digit, we actually estimate. Now we're going to be estimating between this value and between this value. So uh, imagine that section broken down into 10 different sections. So between point two and point three, is what we're going to estimate. Uh, and again, this will be 
an estimated digit, so students, different students, will disagree about the exact measurement. In this case, it looks to me like it's going to be probably just a little bit over, so maybe 0.1. So I'll put the 1 at the end here. So again, this is my estimated digit. If somebody said 0.2, then that would be valid, just the same. And again, what we've done here is we've taken this little section here and expanded it. So if you take a look, we essentially expanded it. So this would be the point 0.2, this would be the point 0.3, and then you estimate in your head again 10 sections, and then you decide where it falls. So in this case, because it fell pretty close to here, we decided it was a 1. So hopefully this makes sense. Don't forget this also needs a unit of centimeters at the end of it. So 3.21 centimeters. This second example gave us one more digit, one more digit at the end as compared to the first example. So here's a summary of what we just uh, said. So what you do when you record is you record all the direct digits from the instrument, and these are called certain digits. These are certain because we should not disagree about them. And then you get to record one estimated digit. The estimated digit is the uncertain digit. This is the one that people can disagree about, and it'll always be the last digit. And then the estimated digit can vary, again, between people. Uh, the direct digits cannot vary between people. And then don't forget that every measurement must have a unit. And this measurement is called a valid measurement. So a measurement could be valid and still be incorrect, uh, because the valid means you used the right number of decimal places. And conversely, a measurement could be correct but invalid. For example, if the measurement was 3.2, and it's correct, but you should have said 3.21. So this measurement would be valid and correct. This measurement will be correct, but not valid. Not valid. And it's not valid because it's missing a decimal place at the end. That's why it's not valid. So for the second ruler that we dealt with, that would be a good example. Okay, final note. Uh, let's try to show you a, a, a common case where you would actually use a zero for your estimated digit. So take a look at this example. And what we have here is we have a ruler uh, that we've seen initially. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we're asked to make a measurement, we know it's seven, so we can put down the seven. So this is your certain digit. Now, oftentimes students will say, well, it lands exactly on the seven, so the answer is seven. But remember, you have to have an estimated digit. You have to estimate into this area. And it's, if it's exactly on the seven, then an estimated digit is zero. So in this case, you have to have a zero. This is your estimated digit. And don't forget the units as centimeters. Same thing if we use this more precise rule. This is your 7, this is your 8, and again it falls exactly on here, so you're tempted to just put a 7. However, remember that each one of these is a point 0.1, a point 0.2, a point 0.3, so this actually has a point 0 on it. And then you get to estimate one more time, so you have to have a site of 0. So the valid measurement here actually contains two zeros. Don't forget the unit. This is commonly uh, missed by students. Uh, they forget to put two zeros because this instrument, this ruler, actually gives you two decimal places. And the way to think about it is if the object to be measured was a little longer, then you would say, well, this is 3 point or 7.3, and then you would estimate one more. And so you realize that you have to have two decimal places. Hopefully, that makes sense. Uh, let's do an example. This example problem will be with a graduated cylinder. Uh, which just kind of shows a section of it. And it, took, it looks like we are between 70 and 80. Now, with a graduated cylinder, it's important to understand that we measure the bottom of this surface right here. This is called a meniscus. With liquids, if you're using a glass graduated cylinder, it will actually form this curved surface, this concave surface. And you actually take a look at the very bottom and measure this very bottom portion of it. So it looks to me like we are, this is 71, 72, 73, 74. So we're at 74 at this mark right here. So we're at least at 74. So we'll put down 74. 
Now we're between 74 and 75, and it looks like we're halfway between there. This looks to me like halfway, which means between 74 and 75, we'll have to estimate somewhere right, way, right halfway through it, which would give us 74.5. That's halfway through it. In this case, the units will be milliliters because a graduated cylinder measures in milliliters, and this is your time answer. So what you get is you get one decimal place past the point. Hopefully that makes sense. I want you to go ahead and practice this on your own and do the same exact thing. And if it's a little hard to see, uh, you can see where, hopefully you can see where the, uh, the line there is. Make a measurement, don't forget the units, and don't forget to use the right number of significant figures at the end. All right, let's do a second example, and this time we'll be measuring using one of these balances. Now, the way a balance works is it has these riders, these guys here, and you get to add up all the riders together. There's actually three of them. This is why it's called a triple beam balance. Triple beam. You'll have to add up all the riders together. So it looks like our final measurement is somewhere right here. What we'll do is we'll add the 500 with the 70, and then with the seven, seven is kind of the last number. So we have 577. And now we have to take a look at this portion here uh, of the last rider. It looks like they are between the six and the seven on the last rider. So this would be a five. That number would be a five. So that would be a six. And then that would be a seven. So it looks like we are definitely between a 6 and a 7. And so we'll put point 6, and then we have to estimate the last digit. The estimation is between a 6 and a 7. And it looks to me like it's a little bit past the halfway mark, so maybe it's a 6. So we'll say point 6, 6. So you have to have two decimal places past the point in this measurement. Hopefully that made sense. Don't forget the units. The units in this case are so your final answer is 577.66 grams. All right, go ahead and try this last example on your own using the exact same idea, and make sure you have the right number of decimal places at the end. So this would uh, complete our video, one of unit one. Hopefully you enjoyed it.